This is a bridesmaid's bouquet made from flowers cut from our garden here in Cheshire in the northwest of England. I'm going to share with you all of the ingredients that went into this and also exactly how I've made it and how I've finished it with this lovely velvet ribbon. for an autumnal um, wedding and all the ingredients in this bucket have been picked from our flower cutting <laughs> garden. So I like to, uh, it's three maids this time, and I like to, for every maid, have a separate bucket and then obviously the bride has a bucket on her own. And that way you never run out of ingredients but also you make sure that there's um, the same feeling to each bouquet with a garden style bouquet no stem is ever exactly the same you're not buying perfectly straight um, super kind of you know sorted stems what you're what you're buying <laughs> is a wild garden style so you're buying the garden and you're choosing to have your bouquet that looks like um, it's been gathered from uh, cut flower garden and, and that's the aesthetic that you're after. So it's always useful to still though to lay out your ingredients and the thing about a garden style bouquet is you need so much more foliage than you think you really do. So a lot of people always ask me about how many stems and you know the, the kind of unhelpful answer to that is it depends but it does depend on what your ingredients look like and um, the volume of them and the kind of aesthetic you're trying to achieve. So I always want to achieve a very loose um, aesthetic. So I'm looking for things with texture and this is ivy that a lot of people use for Christmas but um, I think it's beautiful in our hedgerows right now. So when I went out to cut the ingredients for this bouquet, I was looking at what's actually growing out there, what's in this seasonal moment in autumn. In Cheshire here, um, <laughs> it's kind of winter uh, storms, um, and suddenly it's turned super cold. So for this kind of transition from late summer to autumn, it's happening very quickly. And so all of a sudden we've gone from the abundance of summer to the cold buried seed heads and that kind of um, you know drying um, side of autumn and that's what I wanted to capture in this palette. So again for the, for the bridesmaids I do want to have um, a little echo of the bride and that's why it's really really helpful to make sure you've got the same ingredients across all of your um, palette. And I, I will do a hand tied, start with a three, and these dahlias, this is Cornell Bronze, um, they're quite sort of chunky focal flowers, but it's good to soften them with other things like this Hellenium. So, and this selenium looks really good with this sedum, which is purple emperor, although it doesn't look purple, but it does look very emperor-like. So I am gonna put all my really heavy heads of dahlias in straight away. And that means what I can do then, and forgive the pauses while I think, um, you want them to be facing in slightly different directions, my thalsby is attacking me, and you want to do that classic spiral, but think about the movement that you're trying to achieve. So I, I this is um, my pink Annabelle that tries to this wonderful green at this time of year, and you want to get some movement across your bouquet and some colour because the colours that the bride asked for were very um, bold, almost rustic, reds, very autumnal palette which was absolutely music to my ears. So this is 
hot biscuits absolutely grew it for her specifically and I just love the movement that it gives and just keep turning and having a little look just keep layering I think it's quite nice to use a very um, bluish foliage at this time of year so this is Brachy Brachyglottis used to be called something else but now it's called Brachyglottis, Sinicia it used to be called. So I use that to shore up and then I match with another piece on the other side and I've just started to grow a little eucalyptus orchard so I've got the first little few stems of some plants that I put in the year before last just take a bit of time to have foliage but what I would say if you're thinking about growing a cut flower garden is absolutely think about your foliage right now so it's good to have annual flowers and it's good to get those going and it's really you know it's, it's really lovely to have um, you know flowers that you can grow your own and include them in bouquets I if, if somebody was t telling me years ago what I, I could have done more of, it would have been start some foliage beds earlier and that would have been so, so helpful. So I'm just having a look. I do love this helenium at this time of year. I think it's the, I think it's just the perfect ingredient to be honest. So let me have a little look. It's quite nice to emphasise the movement. And certain things. This is my nine bark which is now forming seed pods which I think is very sort of typical of August, uh, August, autumn and um, I think it's good to see where you want to place things like that. and balance them so they look like they belong there. And I'm keeping my direction turning. I'm a corry, as they say in Scotland, so I'm, I'm left-handed when I make, so I have the things in my right hand and my left hand free, but you may be the other way round or you may be the same but sometimes you know you're one way round doing one thing and you're a different way round doing another so it's useful to explore if you changed hands whether that would feel better so it's, it's always good to find your sweet spot I'm going to say that find your sweet spot I would definitely um, say grow heleniums they're super easy and they come in a range of colours and they seem to be going quite well with this, which is good. Make sure when you're doing a hand tie that you're always going side to side and also bringing the foliage down because that's what gives you a nice shape. So if I, these dahlias are heavy headed girls so they do need a bit of shoring up. And then I've got some foliage for the outside. And the other advantage of having all your flowers pre kind of measured out, if you like, in a bucket is um, your bouquets will naturally um, be the same size because um, you've got roughly well, you have got exactly the same amount of stems, um, just they're not all exactly the same. So I think it's quite nice to include some grasses. When I add grasses on one side, I like to add them on the other and use their natural arc as, you know, to get some movement. I'm going to add that stem there 
and then just add one final stem of this hot biscuits, which I think is, is it's looking like a favourite thing at this point. So that's my hand tie. This is the point where you're glad you've got big pockets in your pinny and you've got a bit of a raffia in there, which I know I do have. It's always useful to turn sometimes your bouquet upside down because you can really see the shape. You can take the leaves off at the bottom that aren't going to serve you. Can have a look at it on the top? I think that needs to be tucked down there a bit. And tuck this. This heavy-headed girl because I know she's going to come out. So I'll be wrapping it in a minute as in tying it off and then letting it rest and then I'm wondering whether the bride's gonna have a stormy day tomorrow she possibly could. So a bit of string, keeping your finger make sure that you keep your binding point I'm telling myself and it's firm but gentle, firm but gentle. I've used some of my um, stems of foliage on the outside to make sure I can have that firm but gentle tie. Lay it down. And knot it. And then I usually go under and over again and then tie again. And then make sure it's got everything tucked in. And then what I do is I give it its initial cut. I cut it long because I can't add it back on. But I let them go back into the bucket to have another drink of water. Um, because these are going to be out going to a party tomorrow. And then I'll ribbon them up a bit later. A really common problem with bouquets that you often see is that people don't wrap them tight enough at the binding point. So I'm just going to finish off this bridesmaid bouquet and I'm going to do that by tying another piece of raffia around. So it's really critical that you get that binding point super secure because that is essentially what is holding your design it's really got to be tight because otherwise you know um, flowers do get jiggled around on wedding days and so it's really important to tie a really tight knot so this is when I finish off the bottom of the bouquets as well so let me just do that and then I'm going to get another piece and get it level tie it off and the thing about garden style bouquets particularly when you've arranged them in uh, a hand tied thing is you've got a, a triangle at the bottom so the finishing is really critical actually so you want to make sure that all your little bits of tie are gone because you don't want that to look messy but also I just wrap the bottom it's almost like in a crisscross it's like it's like a Scottish pair of socks this and then it just pulls the bouquet in a just a bit more so you've got a sort of good point for the bridesmaid to put her hand and to hold it so again a super super good knot come around the back and tie it again And there we go. So another top tip, make sure you've got the right scissors because you don't want to be trying to cut your ribbon with your floristry scissors. But you do want to be cutting the bottom with your floristry scissors. So I'm going to make the final cut on this now. So these have been resting for at least four hours. I sometimes do them overnight, but I've just done this one for four hours. And you can see that's a bit of the raffia, so I'm going to cut that off with that. Now I'm going to use velvet for this, 
and it's kind of like that really beautiful autumnal colour. So clear the decks, particularly when you're getting your velvet out. And I, because I make garden style bouquets and they're, they are gardeny, and this is the time to look at your bouquet and take off any leaves that are down the bottom that are just, you know, not helping the design at all. So that's one there. Make sure you don't snip off the stuff that you don't want to though. So I'm sure um, more than one of us have had that experience. So what I do, I lay my ribbon out, I put the bouquet there and then I I want a very sort of natural loop to it. So I just loop it round and then just rest the bouquet where it likes to rest. And then I just, oop, I don't put it in the jar of water. I put a, like a, a knot and then another knot. And I'm careful to place the front end of the ribbon in a nice location and then these are going to be wrapped in tissue and put in their vases so the way I wrap them in tissue is I put the ribbon above with the bouquet wrap around where the ribbon is and then I put the bouquet in the vase and that's my final bridal bouquet.